terrific job clearing off the snow. Purdue in all white, they won the toss and they elected to receive. So kind of the first shot at Iowa knowing that Kirk Ferentz loves to start out with his offense out on the field as the Boilermakers will continue a quest for a major upset here this afternoon. Frankie Williams on the return out across the 25 yard line. And that's where Purdue will start things off with their young quarterback, David Blau, a red shirt freshman has great potential out of Carrollton, Texas. Finally, some stability, Anthony, at the position as he makes his eighth consecutive start. That's the most they've had there in four years. Coaches rave about playing beyond his years. You'll see the maturity. Does a tremendous job of reading coverages. He's looked through his progressions. I'll tell you what, he, he could be the answer for Purdue's future. They are also relying on a young backfield. Markel Jones, the freshman, will get the start at the tailback spot. And it's Blau with the rollout, and he's looking to throw to the freshman downfield on the wheel route incomplete. Greg Maben had the coverage. Last week against Northwestern, out of the gates, they went on the first play down the sideline with the receiver, tried to get the running back, Markel Jones, active in the receiving game, one of the top receiving running backs on this football team. The other adjustment today for Daryl Hazel, his offensive line without starting left tackle, David Hedlund. For the first time, they have a new offensive lineman as Jones is able to run it out across the 35 to about the 36 yard line Jordan Lomax on the tackle what they've done is moved Cameron Sermon from the left side to uh, the right and Martise Patterson now is the starter at right tackle yeah Martise Patterson a young athlete they love him he could be the future for this football team big big man 350 pounds you can't miss him number 74 a couple of tight ends here on third down Wow, on the boot, Jones, and the pass is broken up by the middle linebacker, Josie Jewell, the sophomore out of Decor, Iowa. And it's fourth down. This defense of Iowa has been assignment sound the entire year. You see they have coverage on the running back. Blau's unable to get up the field and run. They're protecting with a corner on the outside in case he decides to run the football. In the right spots, in the right positions have been huge. Joe Shopper, the punter, Desmond King, is back deep. Third in the Big Ten Conference at uh, almost 13 yards per return. Standing back inside his own 30. High boot by Shopper King with the fair catch at the 26-yard line. 38 yards on that punt. That'll bring on C.J. Bethard, the junior from Franklin, Tennessee, who considered leaving Iowa last year when he was the backup and now finds himself perfect as the starter, 11-0. His first start in his career was a win last year over Purdue. The passing and rushing numbers are good. People call it, say game manager isn't a good term. I love it. I think he does a phenomenal job protecting the football. Low risk passing game. When it's third and four, he's going for four. Sean Daniels is the single setback. And he'll get the call. We anticipate a heavy dose of the run game for Iowa, which is one of the best in the country, and it will start with LaShawn Daniels. A buck 95 rushing last week. Yeah, their strongest back, 225 pounds. Matt Vandenberg will be the inside slot receiver that'll get a lot of action this game, and Jake Rapogel will have a 15-round matchup between centers Austin Blythe and left guard Sean Welsh. Derek Mitchell is now the offset back. with plenty of time in his first pass a completion to Tavon Smith who stepped out of bounds out across the 40 to the 42 yard line and a first down. Yeah, Tavon Smith is her big play down the field guy average 18 yards a catch they don't get the ball to him much down the field again time and possession moving the change this this offense right now protects the football and methodically likes to move down the field against defenses they play. Four different running backs they've used already as Jordan Kanziri is behind the fullback, making Pleva. And it is Kanziri with the call. And Anthony, the way that Greg Davis described it yesterday, we're going to run the zone, we're going to run the stretch, and maybe occasionally put a new earring on the pig. Well, it's all about check with me's, and the quarterback, Bethard's got a lot on his plate. Which side has the numbers? On the left, there's four defenders. On the right, they have three. C.J. Bethard calls the stretch play to the right. Watch the right guard and the left tackle, how they protect 
the first level line of scrimmage and get up to the second level. The tight end kicks out the defensive end, and here comes a wide receiver to crack the strong safety. That's really what it's been the entire season in the run game. C.J. Beathard getting them in the right spots. Beathard again, good protection. And now we'll scramble. Looking for a completion at midfield. Incomplete. Evan Panful was the guy that was getting in his face. And C.J. Beathard 11-0 as the starter for this Iowa team, making good decisions this year. Well, you know, he's kept this team on schedule. Offensive coordinator Greg Davis puts a lot on his plate. He gives him a lot of control at the line of scrimmage. The offensive line, to me, has been key in protection and running game. They lost two, two of their tackles, two former walk-ons now playing in 52 Myers at left tackle and Crossing at the right, and they're all in sync. Best gelling offensive line I've seen. They lost both their tackles to the NFL a year ago. Lost their starting running back and their top receiver, and... Here's the catch to the tight end, Henry Krager Koble down inside the 35 to the 32-yard line, and that will move the chains again, and Beathard likes to use these tight ends, Anthony. Again, another check of me, run pass. The blitz is coming. He knows he has single coverage with the tight end, and Krager Koble is one of his favorite targets. Ball placement, catch the ball in tight windows. I love that about the tight ends and getting up the field. This is his ninth straight catch for a first down, a big-time weapon for the quarterback. That one good for 24 yards in his final home game for the senior out of Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Back to the ground, Ethan Daniels. 30 rushing touchdowns this year, Anthony, for this offense. That's tops in FBS. They've got three different guys that have had over 200 or nearly 200 in a game, and all have shown the ability to break one bit. I'll tell you, they've all gotten some opportunities to play because of injury. Right now, LaShawn Daniels, who I think they like the most, their bruiser back. But Akram Wadley, an explosive back. Jordan Kinzeri, you'll see today, an all-around back. They are deep in the stable. Action to Daniels. The crossing route wide open is Tavon Smith to the 15. And another first down. Methodically moving it upfield. That one good for 16 yards. They're going to keep running at you, running at you, Beth. And then all of a sudden, they dump one over the top. Quick passing game. Again, 6-2. Talk about Tavon being a big target for this offense. Vandenberg will get a lot in the slot, a lot of action. But you see how they take their time, they get up, and they make sure they're in the right play every single snap. First look now at Akram Wadley in the backfield with two tight ends. They will give to Wadley, and he's got the edge, lost his footing. Down to the six-yard line, perhaps our first look at how the weather conditions may affect things today with a wet surface. Yeah, you're right. If there's a back in the backfield that can get that explosive edge, it's Akron Wadley. And great job by the center, Bl Blythe and Welsh, pulling the outside, making huge blocks. Boone, My uh, Boone Myers, number 52 to left tackle. Again, a former walk-on, Beth. These linemen, the way they play, it's been uh, well documented on film. How they have come together has been a huge story, as well as the return of their fullbacks who were both dinged up last year. Here is Jordan Kanzuri. Launches himself down to the three. Brandon Roberts with the stop. It's a Purdue defense that uh, has really struggled to stop the run. And in fact, the worst in the Big Ten, this Purdue defense, look at what they've given up in their last two games on the ground. Yeah, it hasn't been pretty losing their Mike Backer and top tackler Jawan Bentley, number four, not being in this uh, this defense the last couple weeks has really taken the breath out of this run-stopping defense. The flip to Wadley, the cutback. We have gotten uh, the crown of that helmet down to about the two-yard line. This has been one of their MOs all year long. Long, sustained drives that they usually, Anthony, can cap off with touchdowns. Yeah, finishing the play, that's been their MO the entire year, like you said. Uh, a stable running backs, big backs. Again, when you get tight down, second, second down opportunities, this could be a tight end situation. How about three tight ends? They'll run it right up the middle and in for the touchdown. LaShawn Daniels. An impressive opening drive for the Hawkeyes. They might not throw it to the tight ends down deep, but they use them as blockers. Three tight ends set. And again, they're just going to mash you with the ball. They have a 
ton of co talent at the running back position. They believe in every one of these guys, and they just keep putting them in. An impressive 11-play drive, 74 yards, just over five minutes to get the lead. Rough conditions this and why not? They've never been in this type of environment before when you are talking about a 10 and 0 Hawkeye football team. The first time in history they have stood on this precipice and certainly a chance at a Big Ten championship as well as the playoff all within reach in the next couple of weeks. Frankie Williams takes a big hit at the 16 and down he goes from Maurice Fleming. Now let's take a look at this week's rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Top four remain the same. Iowa still sitting at number five, and Oklahoma State now has moved up right behind them along with Oklahoma. Iowa sitting in a, a perfect spot. They take care of business today and moving forward. They're going to be right in the driver's seat, right where their fan base wants them, right where their teammates and the coaches want to be. But it's one game at a time under Kurt Ferentz's watch. Still might be headed towards a showdown in the Big Ten Championship game with Ohio State. Buckeyes are up next on ABC against Michigan State and the shoe. And the give is to Markel Jones taking it up the middle. Nathan Budgeta with the stop up front. And, uh, what a job that Kirk Ferentz has uh, helped engineer here in his 17th season. A couple of Big Ten championships. Three times the Big Ten coach of the year as he headed for a record fourth this season. Pass out in the flat, and uh, the diving catch is made for a short game. But he also changed some things to Kirk Ferentz sort of around the program and what was happening on the field. He did, and you know it hasn't been the same like everybody thinks it has. You know They don't practice on Thursdays, Bet. They don't let the players come into the building. Fridays actually is a big day for them. They shock the system. They actually work these guys out in the weight room, and they get about 50 plays in the script, so put a lot of trust in these young men at Iowa. They also move their practices to the mornings. Third and five here for Purdue. Blau out of the gun. Feeling some pressure wrapped up and down he goes. Parker Hesse, the redshirt freshman who has replaced the injured Drew Ott along the front line gets the sack. And a loss of six. Yeah, Parker Hesse, redshirt freshman at the bottom of your screen. He's only 240 pounds. Just continues to work. The one thing the coaches say is he gives that effort. He gives that toughness. He goes 100 miles an hour every single play. And you see him here. He just gets that motor flying. David Blau is going to have to understand that when that clock gets down, he's going to have to use his legs. I think that would be a big component for Purdue in this football game. Joe Schopper from his five-yard line. Desmond King again with a fair catch. But this time the Hawkeyes will start out in Purdue territory after the 34-yard punt. Already up seven to nothing. The sun has replaced the snowflakes here in Kinnick Stadium. And the ground crew has done a tremendous job of getting the field ready. The snow is gone, the sun is out, and the Hawkeyes have the football and the lead as they start out in Purdue territory. Impressive on that first drive, going 74 yards in 11 plays. The Lincoln Financial Drive recap. Yeah, distributing the football, passes that they can use and be productive on, getting it to the tight end, which I'd always love to see. But again, a smart quarterback that understands how to distribute the ball. When it's time to get those tough yards, you know they're going to hit one of them running backs underneath for a big run to get them into the end zone. LaShawn Daniels from two yards out with that score. On second and eight, the fake to Kanziri. It'll be the end around of Vandenberg. Terrific block on the edge as he gets down close to the 30-yard line. That was the junior tight end, George Kittle, leading the way in a gain of 15. They're in a bunch personnel. George Kittle, one of their productive tight ends this year, is going to get around the outside, be the lead blocker. Vandenberg's just going to get upfield. Good blocks on the outside, left tackle, Myers getting a knockdown block again. Everybody does their job perfectly on each snap. Bethard sees something across the way. He'll uh, do that check down that we've talked about, try and turn this into a numbers game in his favor as Kanziri picks up a few yards. How about an update on one loss, North Carolina?
North Carolina, do they have time to move further up the rankings? Terrific play from Marquise Williams, their quarterback. It was a phone call from Peyton Manning earlier this year that may have turned things around for them. As Bethard finds Smith across the middle. First down inside the 15. As uh, Manning reached out to Williams after their opening loss to South Carolina, they have not lost since. Well, we called one of their games early in the season. They got weapons all over the place. Big time receivers in the outside. Three, six, four wide receivers. They have a plethora of running backs. And right now, Marquise Williams is really running the show for them and got them clicking at the right time. They had the biggest move this week, up six spots, but it was only to number 17. As Daniels now re-enters the game at tailback. He will get the call to the left. Plenty of room, and he finds the hole and scampers in for six more. I'll tell you, I turn the film on. I love watching this offensive line operate right to left, left to right. It doesn't matter where you put the tape on it. Just watch this left side. Everybody in continuity, pushing their guys inside. Look at that wall. An untouched running back going through. LaShawn Daniels, folks, he's 6'2", 225. He is a big guy on that 13-yard run on that touchdown. Extra point uh, from... One of their seniors, Marshall Kane, is good. Short field for Iowa, and they take advantage of it. Five plays, 49 yards later, they are right up. Two scores on just two possessions. 14 to nothing, Iowa, two possessions and two touchdown runs for LaShawn Daniels on a day where they can clinch a spot in the Big Ten championship game with a win as the West Division representative. Frankie Williams back in the end zone. He will take a knee. Who might they be playing if they get there? Well, a lot will depend on this Michigan State-Ohio State game coming up at the Horseshoe on ABC 330 Eastern. The Buckeyes riding a 23-game winning streak since Michigan State beat them in the championship a couple of years ago. It's college football presented by K Jewelers coming up at 3.30 on ABC. Is this guy your Heisman front runner right now? Uh, he is, and he's got a great chance right now the next three games. If everything leads the way they want, he could really propel himself to the top of that Heisman Trophy candidate list. 16 touchdowns. He's got a 100 yards rushing in 15 straight games, carrying over from his big finish to the end of last year. As DJ Knox gets the carry, wrapped up by Sophomore DB Miles Taylor. And a four yard gain for Purdue. They really need to try and get something going here, if for no other reason to give their defense a bit of a rest. Out manned right now, 123 total yards for Iowa to 12 for Purdue. DJ Knox again. They've got the redshirt freshman quarterback, Anthony, Markel Jones, the freshman starting running back, and now the sophomore Knox out of Fairburn, Georgia. Yeah, Knox is a shifty back, a quicker guy. He's been really banged up this year, missed a couple games, and really giving Markel Jones an opportunity. But this is where Purdue wants to be. This is a favorable situation, third and short. You have a running quarterback. You can get around the edge on a run-pass combination or give it to your big, big back down inside to get some tough yards behind a a veteran late, late in offensive line. A hand off to number one to try and get one yard, and he gets out across the 35. Let's see where the spot is. Cole Fisher on the tackle, and they are saying, go ahead and move the chains. First down, Purdue. For Daryl Hazel now in his third season. Trying to get their first win against a ranked opponent since 2011. They haven't beaten a top five opponent since 1974 on the road. Knox again will pick up a few. How about to the studio? Chris has an update for us. Second and 
Thank you very much, Chris. Well, if Michigan wins and Ohio State wins, that sets up a winner-take-all showdown next week in the East for a spot in the Big Ten Championship game. The pass caught by D'Angelo Yancey. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He leads the team in receiving yards and has three touchdown catches of over 25, including an 83-yarder in their huge win against Nebraska. That's been the biggest play of the Big Ten between quarterback and wide receiver. I like this kid a lot. Down the field, he's got tremendous speed, long arms, big hands, can pluck the ball out of the air. Right now with this third and short operation for this offense, they got to continue to move the chains because, look, I wear every time they get the ball, they've been scoring. Out into the flat, Yancey has the first down out to the 48-yard line. And that terrific matchup, you're going to watch this one, Yancey and Desmond King today. Yeah, Desmond King, one of my favorite cornerbacks to watch on tape. And, you know, Yancey's going to get out there and just kind of work his route. He's got an inside route, tucks it in the outside, and the quarterback finds him. Great protection by the offensive line, starting with the center, Krugler. Again, Patterson on the right side of the right tackle, stepping in and getting his second start of the year giving David Blau some time. Blau will keep. Oh, he gets smashed as he comes across midfield. Big hit by senior Jordan Lomax, wow. who came up to greet the quarterback. And did the ball come out? Desmond King came out of the pile with the football, and the quarterback, David Blau, is still down on his back after a huge hit from Jordan Lomax. Blau is the redshirt freshman out of Carrollton, Texas, who is making his eighth straight start. If you followed Purdue football, over the last few years, you know about how many changes they have had to go through at the quarterback spot. They have actually made a midseason change in each of the last three years. By Purdue, recovered by Iowa. First down and ten. And now to add to that frustration for Purdue, it's a fumble recovered by Iowa. And the ball actually comes loose prior to Lomax hitting him. Let's say number 99, Budgeta, might have gotten his hand in there and knocked it out. Again, big hit. Jordan Lomax is a box run support player right there, filling a gap with the quarterback run. David Blau is up and getting some assistance from the athletic trainers over to the sideline. The backup quarterback for Purdue is Austin Appleby, who was their starter at the beginning of the year. See the ball get poked out. Max applies the hit. Again, this Iowa defense in the right spots. And hopefully David Blau. It's okay. So the Iowa offense back out there. C.J. Beathard, empty set. Beathard tosses away, looking for Tavon Smith. Back shoulder catch to the 25-yard line, and Beathard sat right in there knowing he was going to take a hit. Zero coverage in the back end, man to man across the board. This ball was in the air before Tavon even had the chance to look up, but great job again. his eyes up, finding the football. 30-yard gain down the field. And this ball is up in the air, folks, before he's able to see it. Beathard taking the hit after the throw. Danny, easy, easy Chuku bringing some pressure. Kanziri deep in the backfield. C.J. Beathard 
saw that the uh, out. play clock was winding Iowa. down to first the two half. seconds, so he'll take the timeout. Iowa on the move again, already up a couple scores. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, excuse me, coverage begins tonight at 8 on ESPN. Sooners are 3-0 and this year against ranked opponents, and TCU will, could be undermanned. They're already without Josh Dotson at wide receiver. The handoff to Kanziri, nice cutback down inside the 15. And close to the first down marker, Leroy Clark able to take him down. And Anthony Brown. See the patience, Beth, the quarterback at the line of scrimmage. Getting them in the right situations every single time. They had a blitzing corner on the outside or extremely strong safety. Gets it to the right. Just manages a football game. Takes it over and beats you with nothing. The end of the first quarter. An impressive one for Iowa. They've had the ball twice. They have scored twice. Trying to get into the Big Ten championship game. They have been no nonsense so far. Taking care of business and on the move again. The ball on the Purdue 13 yard line. Efficient, highly effective, a good balance of the run and pass game today. Six different guys have been in the backfield at tailback and fullback already this afternoon. And this will be Jordan Kanziri getting a nice block from one of those fullbacks down inside the 10 yard line. That was senior Adam Cox leading the way in a seven yard run. Again, another stretch play. It, it's pretty to watch how this offensive line gels all the way across the board, starts with the quarterback, getting them in the right side of the field, away from the numbers. And again, they pound you first down, second down, always getting positive yards. This defensive line of Purdue has to be moved, has to be mobile today and get these offensive linemen off their tracks. Daniels is the deep back. He's got it. He's hit right around the line of scrimmage and thrown down by Ryan Watson, the fifth year senior out of Ellicott City, Maryland. Second and goal. I was talking to a defensive coordinator for Purdue Greg Hudson, he said, listen, we have to move our defensive line. We have to stem them. We have to slant them. And to me, you're right. Don't just stand in a spot and let these offensive linemen get their combination blocks and know where you are. You've got to keep that movement and keep that balance, and you have to fight off tackles, uh, blockers, to make some plays. Trips to the left. Looking that way to Matt Vandenberg with blockers in front of him, diving for the pylon and in. Touchdown, Iowa, led by Jacob Hillier and Henry Krager Koble. Everybody's in the right spots, Beth. Everybody's making their blocks. All 11 players doing their thing. Look on the outside, number 17, Hillier. Kager Co uh, Coble on the outside tight end, making their blocks. They're like robots, they're machines. They go out there and everything they're coached up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. They're getting it done, they're off on Thursdays. And that PAT attempt was blocked by Purdue. Their lone miscue, but three possessions resulting in three touchdowns. They have fumble early, getting the turnovers. That's what this defense has done so well all season. And everybody getting their blocks, making it easy. Vandenberg dives in, gets himself a touchdown. Iowa big. And uh, it appears a quarterback change on the horizon here for Purdue after an injury to starting quarterback David Blau as their offense will get set to take the field after this kickoff. From Marshall Kane, Frankie Williams, and Markel Jones, the deep guys. The snow has stopped, but the wind has not on a blustery day here at Kinnick Stadium as they get the uh, football back on the tee. On a day when the Hawkeyes can clinch a share of the West, and that would be good enough to get them in to the Big Ten Championship game on December 5th in Indianapolis. One more game left on the regular season schedule. That's for the Heroes Trophy and a short week 
with Nebraska sitting on a bye this Saturday as uh, they will head to, uh, to Lincoln next Friday. We're not going to see much with Iowa today if it, this holds up the way it has been going offensively. But again, Iowa continues to just do their job and execute every single down. Sean Draper holding for Kane. It's a short kick and a chance for Williams to return. Bunched up around the 20, stays on his feet and gets out to the 28-yard line. Down to Paul for a quarterback update. Well, you saw David Blau in that prior possession. He actually got knocked out of the game. He is in the locker room. I saw him walking to the locker room with trainers. He looked a little disoriented, so it's all Austin Appleby. And, you know, I'm so impressed with this Iowa sideline. So much energy, juice. These guys are playing like it's 0-0 with a ton on the line. Now that defense is right back out there to face Austin Appleby who started uh, the first three games of the season and then was replaced by Blau. Also played last year for Purdue and his first call is the handoff to Markel Jones. Chris Cotter with an update in the studio. Chris. trying to get uh, that first win of the season. Purdue will be playing Indiana for the Old Oaken Bucket next week. And the pass is caught by Domo Young out around the 40-yard line, 12 yards on that strike and a first down. Appleby, a big, strong-arm quarterback. The problem with him starting the season was turnovers, fumbles, interceptions. They, they said, look, we have to hold everyone accountable. That's why he ended up getting pulled as the starter, a guy that can use his legs to a big running back also. Jones to the left. Wrapped up at the 46-yard line. Josie Jewell with the tackle, their leading tackler. He's also got a pick six this year. And the coaches rave about his magnetic presence and his leadership. Yeah, they say, you know, he's just a guy. But when you watch him on tape, kid leads the team in tackles, fifth in the Big Ten. He's tough, hard-nosed. He comes downhill in the right gaps every time, a studier of the game. We'll try and stretch this one out. Jewell. Coming a long way to make a hit on Jones at the 49-yard line. Nate Meyer also helped him out there. It's a defense that has been so much better this year against the run, and guys like Jewel and Meyer are big reasons why. Everybody just buys in. Everybody does their job. They're only going to run about two defenses the entire game today. They just got to make tackles, make plays, and that's what they've done well every week. And that's hard to do when you're asking college kids to be executors every single solitary game. Third and three. Appleby will keep, and Appleby will not get there. Matt Nelson had it covered the whole way. The redshirt freshman out of Cedar Rapids, and it's fourth down. And they bring action to the left, staying home on the right. It's all about assignment football, understanding your gaps, watch the defensive end, just stay home. Got the corner on the outside, ready to make a tackle, Mabin. You know, to me, it's so impressive to see that because you're asking players to do their job and be in the right spots every single time, and they do it consecutive weeks. You're asking guys to be in the right spots, execute. They're well coached, and that's a big part of it. They have not allowed Purdue to move the ball effectively today. The punt from Shopper, that will not reach King, but off the bounce, takes a nice couple of hops for Purdue and they will down it around the one yard line 48 yards on that punt touchdown by Alex Hilger time out on a wintry day here in Iowa City well on their way to what could be a record-setting season here at Iowa being a, a part of this team that is 10 and 0 for the first time in school history a win today ties the school record with 11 and they'd have a chance to break that next week against Nebraska. And of course, just as important a win today gets them into the Big Ten final, Anthony, and keeps their hopes alive for a spot in the playoff. And all that you're talking about, it only matters in this moment. It's this play. That's the most important thing about this Iowa Hawkeye football team. They don't really look to the past. A lot of teams embrace it. We had McElwain for Florida. They embrace all the opportunities. We're here with Iowa. They are about the moment, and it's this play right now they're about to run. 
get them on the shadow of their own goal post. With a third down and short coming up. Again, when you have that success in the running game, play action becomes so key. Uh, you get your bigger backs, you get some of those uh, tight ends involved, and you really keep your defense on your heels. When you have it at you know third and short, you can really have multiple options with the style of running game that you have. And with C.J. Beathard getting them in the right play every single time, whether that be two run plays or a check with me with a pass and a run, becomes lethal. Third down back is Derek Mitchell. Beathard's pass, juggled and incomplete, intended for Matt Vandenberg and broken up by Leroy Clark, the junior out of Miami. Yeah, Leroy Clark is a former cornerback, very good cover guy with a strong safety position. He's in, in the spot to make the play, knocks the ball up, Vandenberg trying to pull it in. Look, a good stop for this defense. They needed something to go there well. They pinned him back, and they're going to hit the ball in some favorable field position now for the first time in this game. Frankie Williams awaits at midfield. It's the kicker, Marshall Kane, and not the punter, Dylan Kidd. Out of his own end zone. And fortunately for Iowa, it takes a couple of bounces in the right direction. It was a low-flying kick, but it works out all right. Purdue will have it, though, in Iowa territory. Time out. Why is this Iowa defense so strong and so good? This man right here, Desmond King. And when I look in the NFL, Chris Harris, the Bronco, the all-pro all cornerback, 5'10", similar player, coverage guy, finding the football, the ball skills. He's one of the best cornerbacks I've seen on film. And he turns around and looks for the pass. You watch all these cornerbacks, they don't look back. You see him here against Wisconsin, tremendous job of getting himself set, making big plays. He's got eight interceptions this year, led the team in tackles last season. And he's going to have some big questions to fill. He's only a junior. The NFL is going to be looking hard at him. He's going to be those big-time guys coming out. And with favorable field position with Purdue, with an opportunity to go down the field, let's keep an eye on him as he passes covers this Purdue offense. Those eight picks tied for the FBS lead. It's also tied for the school record with Niall Kinnick and Lou King. Appleby, and dump it off for Jones. Ball pops out at the tail end of the play. Purdue has already coughed it up once. And they're going to whistle this one dead. And Purdue will keep it after uh, Cole Fisher tried to get in there and wrestle it out. And, you know, Paul early in the game was talking about that hard football, and that's a big thing right there. Getting knocked out, you got to really secure the football. Iowa does a nice job. A fumble is under further review. Iowa does a nice job of when they're wrapping up and tackling their putting their arms through the football. Cole Fisher, very intelligent linebacker, one of their seniors, uh, is, is a really smart. He's an engineer. He's a guy that actually misses practice because of school, but he is a guy that understands how to make perfect form tackles, and you see with the ball bouncing out, they're giving themselves a chance to create tur turnovers. And is that ball coming out before his knee touches the ground? It's going to be close. Well, the, the thing, though, here is I'm pretty sure Markel Jones is the guy that recovered it. So unless they're looking for maybe where the spot of the ball should be. Yeah. That ball squirts out. Again, you see Markel Jones quick to get to the football. I think it will be a spot decision. Here. Yeah. Right now, it's just inside the 40-yard line. As Purdue continues to play without starting quarterback, David Blau took a hard hit uh, earlier in the day. They've gone to Austin Appleby, who was their starter at the beginning of the season before Blau replaced him. They really like Markel Jones, a, a true freshman. Mr. Indiana football player, senior year, 3,500 yards rushing. 60 touchdowns, 125 for his career. That's impressive. Really talented guy. 
uh, for this. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Second down, Purdue. For, for a team that, as we talked about, they beat Nebraska, scored 55 points. They have been competitive against their two previous ranked opponents, Michigan State and Northwestern. And bunch three receivers to the top of your screen and run the other way. That was Jones with the carry. Parker Hesse got the tackle. And Beth, to your point, they played to their level of competition. They play the ranked opponents tough. But when they play teams that are similar to them or at the level uh, even keel to those those teams, they turn the ball over. They haven't been on point in those football games. They have home losses, bad ones to both Illinois and Minnesota. Also, they will run it here on third and short. Jones has the first down inside the 35. Good push from those guys up front. They don't have a lot of depth along the line due to the injury that has taken out David Hedlund. You know, some of the differences with Iowa's offense is they don't make mistakes on these long drives. Purdue's been a team, when they put long drives together, they're, they actually are a little bit mistake-prone with fumbles and interceptions. We've seen that early in this game. Jones tries to cut back, runs into the arms of Jewell and Meyer, and it appears that now uh, Kirk Barron is a guy that has moved into the lineup here along the front keeping an eye on where Marquise Patterson may have gone to. Yeah, Ruse jumps out to right tackle. Yeah. They're right, they are limited at their offensive line. All kinds of changes there, as well as the change of quarterback. Appleby makes the completion to D'Angelo Yancey for another first down and a 12-yard gain, their best drive so far of the day. Yep, Yancey King, this is a matchup that I want to see tight coverage. Again, Yancey's a good receiver, comes out of his break. King in the spot to knock him out, not letting up a big explosive play, but I know King wants to be tighter than that against this matchup. We'll see him again at the top of your screen. These two will be matched up in this football game. Jones tries to get to the edge. King comes up to help out Hesse on the hit. Maybe picked up one, second down. And you see the support that King gives you on the outside. And we talked to Phil Parker, the defensive coordinator. He worries about him. He, he gets so many reps. They put so much on his plate, so many responsibilities. And he's got special teams as a returner. A kid does a lot for a junior or true junior. He's made a lot of football plays for this team. Making his 36th career start here this afternoon. Whistle before the snap. We're going to get uh, Cole Herdman moving early. Ball start. Offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's the first penalty of the day. These are the examples of differences between teams, right? You don't see the false starts, the movements of Iowa. Nobody jumps off sides. They're on the same page. Even with all the, the action going on at the line of scrimmage for Iowa on offense, they're still able to keep their composure where Purdue is trying to understand, trying to grow. These are the small, subtle details that make Iowa a very good team when you talk about big picture in the college football rankings. Second and 14. The pass completed to Cameron Posey. Junior out of Boca Raton. That'll get some of that yardage back. But it's still going to set up third and uh, third and about eight. Getting some action on King here. He's a smart player, getting a lot of short passes. See if they try to get a little double move and see if he can play it to perfection. May also be fourth down territory. They haven't had much success with their kicking game. Yancey will be a couple yards short, wrapped up by King. So what do you do here? You've attempted one field goal in your last seven games with Paul Griggs, who also happens to be the guy that kicked the game winner as time expired in this building a few years ago. Yeah, if they're in the red zone, they're going for it every single time. They just don't have the ability to kick field goals right now at a consistent clip. One field goal since Bowling Green. 17 of 33 on fourth down this year. It's good for 52%. Appleby needs to get inside the 10 on a rollout. Is past the one-handed grab down at the two-yard line. Cole Herdman and it's first and goal. Boilermakers. What a catch. The concentration 
The tight end coming up big. He even had number 88, one of my former numbers. I love it. Watch this catch and grab in traffic. Appleby gives him a chance. One-handed. Not quite Odell Beckham Jr., but that was close. We'll take it. Look at that. The tight ends are athletes, Beth. We they are that. athletes, too, aren't they? Appleby is six for six now since coming into the game. They'll try and run for six. Josie Jewell saying hello to Markel Jones. Second and goal. And you sealed Jordan Lomax, a box player. He's in the mix, too. And his defense gets tight down low. But this has been Purdue's best drive of the game and really a crucial confidence builder for them to punch this in. Due to an injury earlier in the half, they've had to make the move to Austin Appleby at quarterback. Now on the 11th play of this drive. Jones muscles his way in. Touchdown, Purdue. So they get the fourth down conversion. They get six on the board. They needed that. They needed a confidence builder we talked about. And Austin Appleby coming into this football game, talked about being on point in that drive with his passes. And those things matter when you move the chains, move the sticks, kind of kind of buy into what Iowa's offense is doing it. That's what uh, Purdue taking a page out of their book. One yard touchdown drive, the extra point is good. 20 to seven now, Iowa. Cole Herman, the tight end, giving his best. Odell Beckham Jr. impersonation with the one-handed catch to get him down wow. deep in the zone. Markel Jones punching it hard. They're big back. Seven. 11 plays. They only needed to go 47 yards again, taking advantage of the short field. Iowa needs to maintain intensity in this football game. Yep. We watched Michigan State Purdue, very similar score. They let Purdue hang around, and they're able to get back in this game. You want to be that next level team, that championship caliber team. Purdue, uh, Iowa needs to take care of business and stay on top of this Purdue team. Scored on their first three possessions and then punted the last time they had it. So now Paul Griggs will need a holder here with the, the wind blowing through Kinnick Stadium. Desmond King awaits, and instead it will be Riley McCarron who will take it, and he'll get out to the 30-yard line, 24 yards on the return. Chris Cotter, what do we got coming up at halftime? Thank you very much, Chris. On first and 10, Jordan Kanziri. Short game there on uh, what was the final home game today for Frank Beamer in Blacksburg. Yeah, played five seasons. West Virginia, one of our big biggest yeah. rivalries. Going down to Blacksburg was always tough. Uh, strong, tough uh, team every single time we played them. Good quarterback play. Special teams was incredible. Mm -hmm. They called it Beamer ball for so many years. And I'll tell you, it was a, a long, uh, absolutely tremendous career by Frank Beamer. 29 years he will be missed. They're trying to get to a bowl game. And of course, North Carolina has a chance to uh, clinch a spot in the ACC championship game. That was Jonathan Parker on uh, the end around. It's going to be third and six. You know, the one thing I know, remember about Frank Beamer is he was a CEO head coach. He let everybody do their jobs, let them manage their players. Offensive coordinators manage, uh, you know, their players on offense. Defensive coordinators did their jobs, and, you know, he let them do what they did, and I think that's been a, a huge in his development of that, that program. Beathard, the third down completion. Henry Krager Coble, and I think that'll make ten straight catches for a first down for Big Henry. That's good for 15 yards. 
It's the same route as before. It's a pivot route, number 80. On the outside, it'll be one-on-one -on -one with, the, with the inside linebacker. He's going to get 10 yards, come around, and it's tight window catches, but his ability to get up the field, keep his balance, and get those that extra yak, we like to call it, he's done a nice job. You're right, 10 straight first down catches. Looking for throw, looking for Vandenberg in the on this connection there. Oh, got Bethard more on C.J. Beathard. You know, Beth, you talk to people around the facility, and the first word that follows Beathard's name is leader. He may not have those gaudy stats, but his teammates know what he means to his team. Wide receiver Matt Vandenberg said, we believe him. His leadership is unreal, unparalleled in college football. And watching Beathard interact with his teammates on the sideline, it's obvious they have his back. He was the backup last year to Jake Rudock, who of course moved on to Michigan after graduating. And here is Beathard on the carry, and the ball squirts out. They haven't turned it over much this season, just nine in 10 games. And it appears that Jimmy Herman has just forced the 10th of the year. We saw earlier in the game, Purdue really quarterback, the wow. The fumble recovered by Purdue. First down and 10. Take a violent hit and he fumble. Now it's Beathard's turn. You're right, they don't turn the ball all over much. And this is a huge play for Purdue right now. Getting the getting that midfield. Again, watch Jimmy Herman, number 29. Really a perfect technique. Helmet right on that football, bounces right out. The 92, Watson right on it. Right here, boom. Perfect technique, look at that form, that wrap tackle. He's getting more reps because Jaywan Bentley is out for the season, making a big play right now. And Purdue, again, getting ball at the favorable position at midfield. Short field to work with. Could make this a one-score game heading into the locker room. And the pass out into the flat caught by Cameron Posey, a pickup of five. Under two minutes to go. Purdue has three timeouts. Both these teams have been effective taking the ball away from opponents. Each side has one this afternoon. Picking up the blitz, Appleby, complete to Young. Down inside the 30-yard line and a first down. Yeah, right now, Appleby, they're taking advantage of some off coverage by Iowa on the outside. Appleby's throwing some strikes. You see a hard-delivered football right into the stomach of the receivers. And right now it's paying dividends for this Purdue offense who's moving down the field in back-to-back -back possessions. Eight straight completions now for Appleby. The reverse. Not the result that Purdue was hoping for. Dan Monarosa, the junior wide receiver from Ohio, barely used on the season, and he gets in a into the act. Defensive coordinator Phil Parker talked about their eyes, training their eyes. Last week against Minnesota, two deceptive plays, very similar to that one there, where they exposed their defense because they tracked and didn't follow their eyes and be in the right spots. Good job there picking up the downfield presence on that reverse potential pass that they wanted. Second down, Appleby. Great time from the O-line, and he finds his man downfield. That's Danny Anthrop, the first time we've mentioned his time uh, name today. Crafty inside slot receiver. He's going to basically run a 12-yard basic route or an in route across the field. Again, spaces are there, a lot of uh, zone coverages by Iowa's defense, and Appleby right now finding those holes. He has really given them a boost. He'll give to Markel Jones, sidesteps his way inside the 10. Matt Nelson with the hit, and a timeout here, Purdue. Purdue, they're first of the half, 30 seconds. Things have gotten much more interesting here at Kinnick Stadium as Purdue is on the drive trying to make it a one-score game. Well, this college football Saturday put one game on your big screen. How about another one on your computer, your tablet, your smartphone? You can watch it all with the Watch ESPN. Just download the app or go to watchespn.com. Good job by Austin Appleby at quarterback.
Yeah, again, he's, he's finding his targets. The off coverage by Iowa, not in the face of the receivers. And just making plays develop there. He needs his tight end make a huge play for him. But he's been accurate. One thing I've, we talked about, interceptions, fumbles out of him early on when he was a starter. Nine for nine, 91 yards. I don't think you can ask anything better than that from your backup quarterback today. We've seen big things from him this year. He had the four touchdowns at Indiana State as he started the first three games, then got relieved by David Blau, who has started the last eight, and now David has been knocked out of the ball game here in the first half. Iowa has not given up points late in the first half all season. They hold their ground on second down. Right now, it's, it's, it's all touchdown or nothing. No kickers are warming up by their nets, so they've got two downs to try to get a touchdown here before the half. They've already had a fourth down conversion on that last drive that led to a touchdown. Danny Anfrook, number 33, working the slot right in the middle here. See if he can get himself open. Appleby will look to Cameron Posey inside the five. Caught and taken down at the four. A couple of yards shy of the marker. As the clock continues to run. Time and out. now the timeout. They their second of the half. 30 seconds. So they've got one timeout left. 29 seconds on the clock. And you're, what, uh, a yard away from a first down. A couple of yards away from a touchdown. And you don't really have a kicker that you can count on because of the problems that Paul Griggs have had, has had. He's three for nine on the season, but he has not made a field goal since the third game of the year, has only attempted one since then. Oh, you know, he's warming his leg up right now, and I think they might actually give him a chance here. It is really close. I mean, this is a, a kicker right now that's a senior. He's made some big kicks in the past, but this year just his mentals have been off and not a lot of confidence by his head coach. He's going to give him another chance here close in close range to get some points before the half. Biggest kick of his career was here in 2013. The game-winning field goal as time expired over the Hawkeyes. This is a 20-yarder. Greg's kick is on the way, and it is good. First field goal for Griggs and Purdue since their third game of the season, and that makes it 20 to 10. You know, it's always a tough situation. You lose confidence from your coach. You don't get those chances and opportunity. You gotta be ready for your moments. And again, it was a short chip shot kick, but he gets a chance to kind of redeem himself in this football game, and maybe that kind of triggers him getting back on the scene. You know Dow Hazel saying a few prayers down there on his knee, making sure that ball goes through the upright. And he's showing the kid confidence, clapping for him, and that's what he's all about, raising kids up, giving them chances, and it's good to see him make a kick. So how about Purdue and Griggs? The first points scored on Iowa in the final two minutes of the first half all season. And as you referenced earlier, Anthony, playing up or down to the level of your competition, they've been good against ranked opponents this year and now showing up after really getting punched in the mouth early in this game, they fell behind three scores. Oh yeah, you, you can't spot good teams 20 points. I mean, it's especially on the road in an environment with the wind and the swirling, but right now your backup quarterback's playing well. You've been able to pin them back on the last couple series. C.J. Beathard comes up with a fumble, you get that turnover, and all of a sudden you cut that lead in half. The question is, how can Iowa respond? This second half will be huge for this Hawkeye football team. Marshall Kane has a monster leg. If Desmond King can get any kind of return here for Iowa with a couple of timeouts left and 25 ticks on the clock. And it is Kane, or excuse me, King with blockers. Gets out uh, past the 35 yard line, a return of 29. Marshall Kane has a 57 yard field goal on the season, a, a game winner against Pitt. Well, you know, you got two timeouts right now, 17 seconds left. Uh, you know, this football team is not an explosive down the field passing team, but they have done a nice job work in the middle. The tight end has been a, a favorable uh, guy. I think they're going to take a knee. Mm -hmm. Kirk Ferentz has got his headsets off. That's always an indicator. 
So they will be happy with a 20 to 10 lead heading into the locker room. We will hear from Paul Carcatero with coach Kirk Ferentz coming up in the Dave and Buster's halftime report. 20 to nothing Hawkeyes as they try and secure a spot in the Big Ten championship game. Now let's get you to Chris Cotter, Butch Davis and Robert Smith in the studio. will be replacing David Blau, who went out with an injury in that first half, and he looked pretty sharp at quarterback. Beth Bowens, along with Anthony Beck, Paul Carcaterra is also with us. How does Iowa find its mojo back in this second half? We'll have to raise their intensity level. They spot, they got up 20 points early against Purdue, and they have to go out and, and run their style of football game. They got a tur they had a turnover uh, late in the in the second quarter that really changed the momentum of this football game, and Purdue took advantage of it. So we got to see that execution they had in those first three drives and they need to start this half with the ball and do that. Purdue will receive uh, after, or excuse me, Purdue will kick. They won the toss and opted to start out the ball game with the football so they will boot it away. Desmond King and Riley McCarron are the deep guys. The run game, one of the best in the country for Iowa. 20 carries for 82 yards in that first half. They did not have any rushing yards in the wrong direction in that first half of play. Everything was positive. 25 yards for Kanziri, 24 for Daniels, Akram Wadley, 13 yards. And this is Desmond King on the return. And it's a good one. King. Gets out to the 33-yard line. How about Beck's breakdown from that run game? It's always about being in control at the quarterback position. Nobody does it better than C.J. Beathard. Watch here again. He's trying to find the numbers. On the right side, five defenders. Goes to the left, four defenders. We'll run that stretch play. We showed it earlier from last game. And again, everybody's in position to make blocks. Everybody's in position to get the running back through the hole. And anytime you get seven, eight yards in the red zone, that's huge for this Iowa offense. See if they can go back to grinding it out on the ground for this Greg Davis offense. They average 210 yards rushing. It's been tremendous balance for this offense all year long. Daniels, Daniels who started early in the season, then got hurt. In fact, all three guys have had to deal with ankle injuries. All three have missed time, and all that's done is opened the, the door, the window of opportunity for the next guy to step in. They've all taken advantage of it, like you said. Eight 100-yard rushing games by three of their backs. Derek Mitchell, number 32, who we not seen yet. That's the receiving uh, running back who's actually in the game, top of the screen. So they'll use a variety of sets right now uh, with this offense. They're going two to one in their play selection so far in the ball game. That third boy, he had a lot of white jerseys coming at him in a hurry. Ended up on his backside, passing complete intended for Tavon Smith. They tried to run a tunnel screen to the outside. This is the down and distance they really aren't used to being in. Third and seven, usually it's a bit closer. Again, the, the one player we've seen every time he catches a ball seems to get a first down is Krager Koble, number 80, the tight end. Uh, again, he's lined up right outside the right tackle in that position. We've seen him in that similar position run that eight, nine-yard pivot route for first downs twice in this game. Purdue showing linebacker blitz. They will bring it. Here comes Jake Rapogel, and they get the sack on C.J. Beathard. Their top defender, the junior out of Centerville, Ohio, and the guy the coaching staff says, we wish we could start 11 Jakes on both sides of the ball. That's the kind of attitude he brings. Well, they're going to bring pressure, and right now the tight end's open in the scene, but he's not looking. They don't have a hot, a hot route built in. Purdue does a nice job. A show and blitz, pulling back, bringing pressure on the outside. Rapogel gets a nice sack inside on quarterback Beathard. Seven yards on the loss, the first sack. The punt from Dylan King hops inside the 35-yard line and out of bounds. 37 yards on the punt, and here comes Purdue with some momentum, and their defense now making some noise. And you see that pressure on the edge, and... They really have him contained, so if you're going to bring pressure on Beathard, make sure he can't run out of the pocket. Good job of closing down the space 
on the quarterback and make it a big play. Raposal, number 54, has been a dominant defensive lineman in the Big Ten. Markel Jones at tailback. Austin Appleby, the former prep Ohio Player of the Year. On in relief of the starter and the injured David Blau will hand off to Jones looking for the left edge. Muscles his way across the 40. Paul Carcatero. Moments ago, caught up with Daryl Hazel, head coach of Purdue. He said Austin Appleby is dialed in. He's doing a great job of finding seams in the Iowa defense, so expect more of the passing game out of Purdue. On the other side of the ball, though, he said defensively, they're struggling with Iowa's running game. He said we're not doing a good enough job pushing the runners back to help spots. This line is legit. Markel Jones out across the 45. And that's a first down Boilermaker. a pickup of five yards. And I think Markel Jones is still the key for this offense. And we talked about, to add what Paul was saying about those open spaces, a lot of zone coverages uh, with this Iowa defense in the first half. But now, as you can see on the outside, look at this tight coverage. They got these DBs up in the faces, especially King. And they chipped away on him early in the, in the second quarter. Out of the pistol, the give to DJ Knox stays on his feet long enough to get across midfield. Tripped up by Nate Meyer. There's another five yards on first down. This offensive line uh, losing Hedelman, Hedelman today at the uh, left tackle. Patterson's back in the game at right tackle, who was out earlier in the second quarter. So, again, they're doing a nice job up front and making some holes. They have been going the entire time. They actually have the time of possession advantage so far on Iowa. That's a rarity. And this pass is caught by Yancey. Gets away from King initially and then dragged down at the 21-yard line. And I think they might tack on a face mask penalty here on Desmond King. The one thing I'm noticing with King is he's respecting him with off coverage. Not a lot of in-your-face coverage there against Yancey. And again, this was a matchup we pegged. Big 28-yard gain and catch, and you're right, I think they're going to tag on a face mask right now. Purdue rolling. Unfortunately for uh, King, that wasn't in your face a defensive move right there, and it'll, it'll cost him some extra Personal yardage. Foul. Face mask, defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run, automatic first down. D'Angelo Yancey now, five catches, 55 yards. And here comes Purdue looking to score points on their third possession in a row. They put up 10 late in the second quarter. Nancy, six targets, five catches to me. That's production. How many times can you make plays every time you get a chance right there? He's maximizing those opportunities. Jones, a stutter step, and pick up a couple. Ran into the arms of Josie Jewell, that leading tackler at linebacker. And again, this secondary of, of Iowa, if they're going to continue to play off on either side, I think Austin Appleby needs to take advantage. Those hitch routes, five, six yards. Let the receiver catch the ball. If they can get upfield, make more yards, you've at least gotten six yards out of the play. So being smart right now. Jones. All down by Cole Fisher, down to the five-yard line. Third down, they can still get a first down at the one. You see the quarterback to running back, that, that feeding the football and, and the ability to potentially pull it out. Those are always dangerous times with backup quarterbacks. They don't get that work. Sometimes you get fumbles in those situations. You've got to be careful when they're running that read option look down deep in the zone. will be looking to the end zone, incomplete and almost picked. That was the linebacker Cole Fisher who was hiding underneath, pass intended for Yancey. Fourth down and do they go to Griggs here for the field goal attempt? Looks like they will. Again, just re reading eyes of the quarterback. Just follow the head, Appleby kind of looking at the receiver the entire route, almost tries to throw it to Paul Carcaterra in the background. Way to be on the spot there, Paul, but Again, here's a kicking opportunity for Purdue. Two and one games, a big for this football team. 
20 yarder was good earlier from Griggs, their first field goal since their third week of the season. And now he's two for two on the day. Three straight scores for Purdue, a touch and a couple of field goals. And it is a one possession game with undefeated Iowa. State, Michigan, and even Penn State are still possibilities for the championship game. And the health of Connor Cook for Michigan State in this game against Ohio State will be key for them to have a chance. If Michigan loses to Penn State, that game going on right now, that opens the door for the Buckeyes to clinch with a win against Michigan State later on. Jordan Kanziri gets the call. Jimmy Herman and Leroy Clark with the stop. The Purdue defense has really knuckled down since giving up three scores on the first three possessions for Iowa. Yeah, forced a turnover before the half, got them in scoring position, and obviously brought pressure on third down last series to get Iowa to punt. Right now, Iowa trying to get something going here uh, in its second series of the second half. Only 86 yards rushing for Iowa thus far. Missouri, he cannot turn the corner. The tackle by Brandon Roberts, and it's going to be third and short. Team's one of the top rushing units in the country. 211 yards, second in the Big Ten. Only 86 today, like you said, Beth. And um, right now, you know, uh, Purdue's got him on the ropes. They got into a one-score game. And a third down opportunity. Let's see if Greg Hudson dials up some pressure here like he did last time. He sacked Bethard on the last third down opportunity. Replogle number 54 in white right up front. They're bringing the pressure again, and Bethard goes down. And it's the second sack for Big Jake. It's a great job by Purdue. They're, they're bringing multiple players to the strong side. And they're getting the offensive line off their numbers. Rapogel is, is going to just be over uh, the center. But watch all this clutter in the inside. Rapogel is going to be a forgotten guy. There's no help because the center has to come off. And again, comes right up the middle, able to make a big play. And he's feeling it right now at that nose guard position. He blew right by the youngster, Sean Welsh, one of their top guys. Back to back three and outs for Iowa. And now a chance for Purdue to tie things up. The game is about momentum, Beth, and it's about making right big plays in these moments. Purdue feeling it right now. Rapogel making some big plays, back-to-back -back sacks in the last two series. Purdue feeling confident right now in Iowa. So right now, Purdue has the football. They've got the momentum, and they've got a hot-handed quarterback on in relief, Austin Appleby is 11 for 13 with 126 yards. Back to the air, he slings it downfield for a first down out across midfield to Domo Young in a pickup of 16. I mean, it's like target practice right now. Appleby is firing at all cylinders. I mean, hitting receivers right in the chest. This guy came off the bench. It's a cold, blustery day. The wind is swirling. A lot of pressure on him. He stood in the pocket and delivered. My question is, where's the pressure from this front four of this Iowa defensive line? Puts it right into the belly of Markel Jones. He's down inside the 35. Delivers a hit to Lomax. The guy who lowered the boom on quarterback David Blau in the first half. And... Knocked him out of the ball game. There's another 14-yard gain. Defensive coordinator Phil Parker talked about setting the edge as a defensive end. Right there, Nate Meyer not there. Ever since Drew Ott's been out for the season early on, their defensive def efficiency has gone down. Longest run of the day for Purdue. Appleby will drop it off underneath. Initially was looking deep downfield as it goes through the hands of Cameron Posey. Lomax, too, coming down in the box and trying to lay a lick on Markel Jones. He just showed him right there. Markel Jones is a big cat in the backfield. Big back on the outside, bringing that thunder. Haven't beaten a ranked opponent in four years. The last time you took down a top five team on the road was 1974. The Boilermakers coming in two and eight and trying to spoil the Hawkeye party today.
Appleby has a man downfield and off the hand of Yancey. Had a step on the defender, Desmond King. He really did. Uh, Yancey's done a nice job. He's actually in the open. Throws a strike again. He's looking at the safety, loses track of the football. He just reaches out with two hands. That's an easy catch, potentially a touchdown. Yancey, much better receiver than that as far as clasping down on that football. They need their big time players to step up when you're playing a team like Iowa. Appleby stepping up. Incomplete across the middle. Jordan Lomax jumped the route, may have gotten a hand on it, intended for Yancey. And are you going to go on fourth down? This is the first time they ran that Raider defense. Everybody's standing around. Now Lomax puts that hand up, doesn't touch it. Again, Yancey, one hand, hits the ball, can't concentrate and pull that ball in. Lomax misses the football. So again, two lack of focus plays by Yancey, or he could have had huge plays for this offense. Corners Joe Shopper. He will kick it away and try and drop it inside the 20, perhaps the 10. And he deadens that one perfectly. Touched at the 9. 25 yards, but forget about the distance. Where did it end up for Purdue? Good news for Iowa. Can they rediscover their run game and their offense? ESPN College Football, brought to you by Coke Zero. All tastes, zero calories. Try a new game day tradition. And Cadillac. on the gridiron as fourth ranked Iowa upset number one Oklahoma State and they wrestled outdoors to set a new NCAA dual meet attendance record of 42,287 were on hand another big crowd here despite the weather to watch some football let's see if the offense can get it rolling their center Austin Blythe former heavyweight wrestling champ in the state of Iowa protecting Bethard who finds Henry Krager Coble for the first down. Paul? Yeah, this state knows a thing or two about wrestling. Tom Brands, the wrestling coach, actually had a chance to stop by their practice on Friday. Austin Blythe, three-time state champ, holds the state record for pins. That's an incredible feat in this state. Known for great hands, gets it from his wrestling background. Tom Brands recruited him, but once the gridiron piece came into the mix, he backed off a bit. <laughs> That's a senior, too, playing in his final home game here at Kinnick. And after the offense sputtered on its first two possessions of this half, they're rolling it again, and Blythe and the seniors is one of the reasons why. Well, the one thing you know about Blythe is his hands recoiling his body, getting in front of the guys and shedding, making sure they don't shed off his box. That's where he raises his element of play. Rarely does a guy get around him. And again, him versus number 54 with Pogel in this game will be a big matchup. With time looking for Vandenberg, incomplete, and there comes the penalty flag. Anthony Brown had the coverage and lost sight of the football. Pass interference, defense, number nine. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. That runs right in the receiver's shorthand. He just turns around and runs through him. A little change right now with Iowa. Some passing going on. Hitting the tight ends, their trusty targets on two play action passes. Now coming back down the seam. And they're bringing in their 
Number 32, Derek Mitchell, the receiving running back into the mix. Looks like they're trying to be a little aggressive right now on this drive. Mitchell is the sophomore out of St. Louis, a converted wide receiver. Trips go to the left. Beathard forced to go the opposite way to Mitchell. Had it, couldn't hang on. Ball squirts free. And they're ruling it on incomplete pass on the hit by Easy Chuku. To the studio, Chris. Thank you, Chris. There's a team that is in the SEC championship game under their first-year head coach, Jim McElwain. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Previous play is under further review. So they will take a look to see if Mitchell had control before it popped out. Yeah, easy Chuka. Honestly, this is great film study because when 32's in the game, you got to think screen pass. And again, he never has control of it. Talk about making football move after getting possession of the football. Never quite gets it in his grasp. Mitchell's a former wide receiver. He's got good hands, but... Let's see who, who manages to fall on it just in case they review this. It, uh, it would be Purdue football if they overturn it, but it certainly looks like it was never possessed. That was uh, Howard, number 14. M Mitchell made that transition from spring ball. They moved him to running back, and again, just part of that four-man rotation uh, that brings so many different assets to this offense. And again, when he's in the game, to me, that's a flat, that's red flags for the defense saying, listen, it could be a screen. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed of an incomplete pass. Second down. We see a lot of this, too, over the years, and certainly this year with Kirk Ferentz and his staff. They bring guys in that may be three- or four-star guys and not five-star guys. They build them into players and into guys that they can use in different ways, converting Mitchell, converting some of their walk-on linemen. You've got linebackers that are now playing defensive end after bulking up a little bit. All ways that they have succeeded over the years and certainly a part of the story this season getting to 10-0 for the first time in school history. Kanziri is the offset back. Bethard. Under throws his intended target and hit at the feet of Anthony Brown. Looking for Tavon Smith. And now it's third and ten. Jake Rapogel has been a stud inside, and one-on-one -on -one against him has been tough here. His job just to get around, but he finishes. You never know when your chance is going to come and gets the sack. And here, the left guard, Sean Welsh, thinks he's going to go back all the way outside. Swim moves him, makes a great play. Back-to-back -back sacks on consecutive third downs have really risen this defense up in the second half. And here comes another third and ten. Rapogel tries to get to the outside. Bethard going to run the other way with it, and he'll pick up the first down and slide at the 36-yard line. Rapogel went right, so C.J. took off the other way. Yeah, well, this is the element we haven't seen today, and it's the dangers of his legs. C.J. Bethard, they're going to bring a corner blitz on the outside. Look at the patience. He feels it, just steps up. Offensive lineman gets a hand on him, but right here, once he breaks out of the pocket, you better have a spy on him. No one home to make a big play to stop him. He gets the first down. Wadley now in the deep back in the eye for Iowa. Much better than their first two possessions of the half when they had negative yardage. Wadley. As flags fly behind the running back, he goes out of bounds at the 30. 17 on a hole. Going to be Hillier. Yeah, Mike's got it too. Easy. Holding offense, number 17. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Jeffrey Servinsky, the referee. Making the call on Hillier, the senior out of Somerset, Texas. Hillier's going to be lined up on the top of the screen there. He's going to crack it 
Again, he does get a good crack. It's hard to see if there was an actual hold there. Looks like a good clean block from there, but again, the view wasn't precise, but pushing this team back, very rare. The pro oh, trying to get after Beathard again. And Easy Chuku's got him at the 43-yard line as Jake Replogle has uh, started to dominate a little bit defensively. I could hear from up here. I heard screen, screen, screen. Uh, half of the defensive line was running. We talked about it. Derek Mitchell's in the game, number 32. Look at these guys retract, get outside. You got the linebackers reading it. They're all in good position to make a play. Replogle's in a great spot to prevent C.J. Beathard from getting big yards. Everybody coming in on that tackle. He's having a big game today. Method well protected, dumps it off from Mitchell. And Derek down to the 35, so it's going to bring up a third and nine. Easy Chuku again with the tackle. And when you're in regular down and distances, first and second down, and Mitchell's in the game, it really was a red flag on your coverage. It could be more leaning towards a pass. And Mitchell doesn't run the ball that often. Uh, only 20 carries on the season. So, again, this, this can actually help the defense and allow them to figure out what they want to do and be a little more strength into that coverage. Three of six on third downs today. Vandenberg slotted left. Bethel dumping it off down the middle. And the seam route to George Kittle. Touchdown for the tight end, 35 yards. His dad, Bruce, captain the 1982 Big Ten championship team here at Iowa. And now the son, George Kittle, trying to get these Hawkeyes closer to a berth in the Big Ten championship game. 27-13 Hawkeyes as they go 90. Got him out of flow yet. Let's see if they change some things up on defense here on this series. Michigan is up right now on Penn State, 14-10. Markel Jones finds a nice seam. Picks up a first down. How about an update on North Carolina Vatek, Chris? Well, thank you, Chris. So the heels needed to win the clinch, but a lot of emotion. For Frank Beamer right now, 236 wins in his 29 years. You're, I'll tell you, there's something about flowing in with emotions, you know, playing for a cause. And you look at the standings right now, North Carolina in a real favorable position. Again, can they fight through those emotions on the road uh, against Virginia Tech and finish? That'll be big in my eyes when you talk about moving them up in the rankings. Heels will close out the season next week against our tribal NC State. Dumps it off underneath, and Josie Jewell was waiting. Third down coming up for the Boilermakers. Well, right now we've had off coverage on some of these receivers. I think inside the middle, in front of the safeties, in those zones, you saw number 33, Danny Anthrop, catch a 10-yard in route. Those are the situations in the inside slot receivers. Also number 18, Posey, who also plays in the slot. See if they can beat one-on-one -on -one coverage and get inside and make a play. screen they've switched it's now Josh Jackson defending on Yancey instead they'll go with Markel Jones on the run out to the 40 couple yards short and it's fourth down 125 and counting to go here in the third a conservative play call by Purdue there not taking too many chances to try to attempt to get a first down I mean in my opinion when you look at this team you, know, you got to take your chances and that, that's going to be big when you're talking about when you want to knock off one yep. of these teams like Iowa, being conservative might not be the, the best way to go. Chopper cutting King back at his own 22. They're going to fake it. 
The end around. Purdue going to try and run for it, and they've got the first down and more. On the move, Jarrett Burgess into Iowa territory and conservative on third down, but not on fourth. <laughs> well, he must have heard me. He says, oh, I got them all faked out. I got Iowa faked out. I got Beck fake up in the booth. Well planned play call here. Just when you think you're falling asleep on this on the offense, they go make a play on the special teams. Well, Burgess has been a guy that's been the jet sweep player for this football team on offense down a distance. And Coach Hayes, he's trying to catch up and lead the charge. Right now, he's making all the right calls for this offense. 26 yards, and then the fumble on the snap. It's kicked around, and Appleby, I think, able to fall on it. Second down. Very fortunate there again. Not getting those snaps, backup quarterback, all these little things that you take for granted. The snaps, the handoffs, got to have some premium concentration of those situations. To the fourth quarter we go, Iowa, 15 minutes away from the Big Ten championship game. Just some focus issues, not tracking the ball, finding it out of the quarterback's hands, and following it in, catching with two hands. It cost them. And then the big tight end, George Kittle. It's Kittle time. Down the middle of the field, making a big play, sucking the safety down. They utilize the tight ends three times in that drive. Let them down for a score. Big drive for them. 35 yards. C.J. Beathard's second touchdown pass of the day on second and 15. Austin Appleby will hand it off to Markel Jones for a couple. Starting quarterback David Blau was knocked out of the game in the first half. Appleby on in relief. He's 13 of 18 for 143 yards. He's really been on point. A tremendous effort so far by him. See some substitutions now. Not something that Iowa normally does. The one thing in third down situations, they have this Raider defense. Everybody stands around over the line of scrimmage. Try to bring pressure on them. Appleby trouble with the snap, picks it up off the ground, fires to Yancey, and it's going to be close, but it looks like it's a yard shy. Jordan Lomax with the tackle. Gonna catch the ball, get quick up the field. Completed catch down prior to the fumble. First down and ten. Correction, fourth down. Yeah, I was gonna say, not first down, it's fourth down and one. Yeah, definitely going for it again. Got Markel Jones, big, strong, legged back, 210 pounds. See if they can pound this one up the middle over their best two players, their guards. Jones off the left side, knifes his way through for the first down. So a couple of fourth down conversions today and also a converted fake punt to keep this drive alive earlier. Again, you gotta, you gotta appreciate what Purdue's doing. They were down big in this game, 20 to nothing. Been in control really since the late in the second quarter. Finally, Iowa gets a scoring drive put together. But right now they're answering the call on this series right now. Cozy in motion. Wow, buying himself some more time. Rifles that one towards the end zone and out of play. Looking for uh, his tight end, Jordan Jurasevich. And an injured player down will stop the clock momentarily here. And it is not what Purdue wants to see. They are already very thin on that offensive line. That's starting left guard, Jason King, as we check out one of today's game trend, trends with the strong winds, much more scoring with the wind today, which is the direction that Purdue is currently headed in. And those, those balls coming out of uh, Applebee's hands are really coming out with some zip. He's been on point so far on all his passes. You talk about being thin at the offensive line. The one position that they do have a backup is Kirk Barron, number 53, who will come into this football game to replace King. Roos, who started at right guard, is now out at left tackle. Jones may have 
gotten one. Meyer on the stop, Paul. Well, the wind definitely picking up here. I think this is four down territory, regardless of the fact that Purdue's getting some field goals. They've struggled in that category all season long, so expect this to be four down territory. Especially into that wind, as we talked about. Third and 10. This is the Raider package. Everybody stands up. They're going to pick a gap, run through it, keep the offensive lineman off kilter. Four men coming after Appleby. Squirts away from it. Taken down at the 20 yard line. It'll be fourth down and about six. They almost squeezed through Iowa did. And it's a good job by Appleby just getting some positive yards on that play and keeping this into a favorable fourth down situation. They're definitely going to go for it here. They need touchdowns if they want to have a chance in the fourth quarter right now with 12 minutes left. Danny Anthrop, number 33, has been a big target in clutch situations for this Purdue offense. He's slotted right. Appleby looking that way, looking for Anthrop, incomplete. Looked like Anthrop got wrapped up with Desmond King, who actually had the inside track on that. Yeah, it looked like Desmond King was actually running the out route. He was right on it. Appleby throws the ball behind him, and Anthrop almost gets the catch from behind. They'll turn it over on downs as the Iowa defense holds, and the break up here for King, Iowa football. ESPN, Iowa with the football after the fourth down stop. They've got the lead, and they're trying to put this one out of reach. As Wadley picks up the first down. How about an update on the Wolverines, Chris? Thank you, Chris. So Michigan doing its part to try and stay alive in the Big Ten East race. Bethard intended for Smith incomplete. And Smith wide open. In the West, of course, Iowa can clinch the division and a spot in the championship game with a win here today. These are your teams that are ranked in this week's college football playoff rankings with Ohio State in the playoff picture right now at number three and Iowa just outside of it. Yeah, the Big Ten's been the strongest conference, I think, in the country. The committee obviously agrees with that. And even at 25, Wisconsin, you look at their schedule, they have one loss 10-6 to to Iowa mm -hmm. and a first game loss, two scores to Alabama, and they're at 25. And second and 10, Bethard waiting, releasing deep downfield, and he overthrows Smith. You know, the Hawkeye fans were having a lot of fun uh, with uh, Kirk Herbstreet this week on social media. Come on. Tell us that we're in if we went out as Iowa fans, and that seemed to be Herbie's thoughts. If they beat Nebraska and then win the Big Ten championship game, they will go. Well, you know, it's always tough to gauge. I mean, Iowa is a team, you know, everybody just wants to say they're in now and they're the better team. They're undefeated. They're in the Big Ten. But, you know, it's, it's, it's been a challenge. They, they don't have a tremendous amount of athletes. You talked about the lack of five-star guys. These guys go out there and just play old-school football, and they got to be perfect on both sides, and they've done that through 10 games so far this year. Third and 10. Bethard, one man to beat, and he's got it. First down, Iowa. Iowa and Oklahoma State, the two undefeated teams that are just outside of the top four. The Hawkeyes, the only CFP-ranked team to beat two ranked opponents on the road in Northwestern and Wisconsin already on the resume. Oklahoma State home to Baylor later tonight. Fresh set of downs here for the Hawkeyes. Kanziri. Nice block in front of them. Cut back by Jordan. It was Adam Cox leading the way. Another big gainer, 24 yards for Kanziri. The fullback doing his job. Well, it's senior day, and Adam Cox doesn't get a lot of play. 
But he's going to make a big block to spring Kinzeri. See him come through the offensive line. Watch 38 right on the backer coming around the outside. Really takes two guys out. Jordan Kinzeri knows what to do with it. Big plays are best all around back. Does everything good. Protects, runs. And this is where Iowa takes over the game. End of the fourth quarter. Getting the right play. You see pressure on the outside. CJ is going to talk about it. He's head coach. Timeout. We'll take the break with the Iowa. 36 to go. go. Back in a moment. Quarterback in uh, the history of the game's got those four Super Bowls, of course, and uh, both Kirk Ferentz in his younger days and Brian Ferentz as well spent some time uh, with Bill Belichick over the course of his career. Brian Ferentz with Belichick and the Patriots, and of course Brian is now coaching with his dad. He's the O-line coach, and this year added the title of run game coordinator. Former offensive lineman here, 2002 to 5. Uh, went to the Patriots, was a scout at first, was assistant coach, then went to tight ends. Coached uh, Gronkowski as a rookie. Got to learn under Dante Skarnecki, the longtime Patriots offensive line coach. And I can tell right now the way the Pats block with some, some guys on their team, some undrafted players, you can tell how some of these offensive linemen are well coached, well disciplined, and got great technique. Of course, now Brian coaching with his dad. Beffer, incomplete, and a flag. Hillier was the intended receiver. Williams had the coverage. Speaks a lot, though, to what Kirk Ferentz has done here. And of course, before him, Hayden Fry. Uh, the stability they have had in the coaching ranks, the family that they have tried to build around this football program. Pass interference, defense number 24. Well, we place at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. As uh, we take a look at the jersey chug, but a uh, uh, tug there. But Ferentz has has coached all three of his sons. You've got brothers on this team. You've got cousins playing on this team. You've got nine guys that are legacies. Their fathers played here, and now they get to wear the jersey as well. And of course, head coach Kirk. Uh, Ferentz, his specialty is offensive line, and it all comes together when you talk about Iowa football. How about the tight end? Henry Krager Koble for the touchdown. And the tight ends have scored twice today. 22 yards for the score. It's a simple play action play. Again, they become dangerous weapons when you run the football with this offense. And when they can stay ahead of schedule, C.J. Beathard putting them in the right positions. Check with me, he's at the line of scrimmage. This kid has handled it well. He never puts his offense in a bad situation. And today, he's found his two tight ends, Prager, Kubel, Kobel, and Kittle today. 22 yards on that strike. The PAT is no good. That's the second miss of the day, but it is a 33 to 13 lead for Iowa. Three touchdown passes today for C.J. Beathard. This one to Krager Koble for six. Brian Ferentz amongst those celebrating this. Underrated in terms of what that has meant to a 10 and 0 start and now working on tying the school record with an 11th win here today. Uh, the facility is fantastic. I worked out there Friday and I was in awe. I think what they've done here is they've attracted the kids. If they can get them to the building, mm -hmm. they're staying. And with that building, they've been able to have their players stay, work out, get the videos, and uh, stay, stay around. And I know Clark's got something to add to that because uh, it's really been instrumental in this program. Truly amazing when you think about that facility, Anthony. One of the best in the entire country. What impresses me the most about it, though, is how it's laid out. I mean, it's so convenient for all these kids. But one of the other pieces to this season is the change that Coach Ferentz underwent with his staff. I mean, this is a, a group that has done things one way for a long time. This year, they don't practice on Thursday anymore. They go harder on Friday. I talked to their strength and conditioning coach, Chris Doyle, before the game. He says they get after it on Friday. Kind of loosens them up, gets them ready for game-type speed when Saturday rolls around. And that was a little bit of a, 
uh, of a concerning Full issue for Coach offense. Ferentz and staff Number prior. 74, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Paul, they try to trigger the nervous system, get their body going, keep it game mode, high intensity, right into game day on Saturday. And you saw the start so far today and the season. I mean, they're potentially going on 11 straight wins here. It's, it's worked. On first and 15 after the penalty, Appleby's pass completed to Yancey. You, you talk about how important it's been for the team chemistry. Congratulations to you, by the way, Anthony, your first toss down to the sideline as our chemistry continues <laughs> to improve as well. Uh, but the fact that they want to hang out together, whether it's a meal, whether it's watching tape, whether it's just hanging out talking football, all three coaches, Kirk Ferentz and both conditioners, told us that's been huge this year for building the leadership and the chemistry that has helped them win the close games, their 4-0, and win all their home games. Camaraderie, building team skills, uh, you know, those are key components uh, when you're trying to win and, and potentially get into a championship Paul, You know, you look at the way that this team is built. On paper, they lost a ton. Drew Ott's gone. You got Trinkle Passat and Carl Davis from last year gone on the defensive front. Brendan Sheriff. One consistent senior leadership. Kirk Farron said yesterday he is in awe of the work of the 21 seniors and what they put into this season. Pressure on Appleby. The pass incomplete. And it's going to be fourth down. I've been, I've been impressed with the brand and style that I was put on the table, not just in this game, but on film, week in and week out being able to control the football games. And, and right here, Purdue pushed way back on the 30-yard line going for it on fourth down. Got to go, fourth and four. They need the 35-yard line. Four-man rush, Appleby throws, and it's caught first down. Bouncing out to the 42 is Jordan Jurasevich. It's been that kind of day, Beth. Tight ends on Iowa. Tight end catches today for Purdue. And it's really been tight windows for the for the Purdue tight ends. In a lot of traffic, pulling it in. It's a nice catch there. Getting it done by Drew Vasage. Set it down. The beat passes up and almost picked off. Desmond King also almost had number nine to take over the national lead. Well, you know, every time you turn the tape on, he's touched the ball at least once. Here's his chance here. Couldn't quite pull it in. And again, he's kind of playing that rover position, falling back, helping out on that coverage. And uh, he's had a nice day today. He turns the ball, does a lot of a lot of off, a lot of plays on defense that he takes. They ask him to do a lot of different things. He's been on Yancey the whole day today. Number seven for has been a nice matchup. Eight picks the most here in 13 years. That will be flushed on the rollout, incomplete down the sideline. Well, tonight on Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart, Oklahoma will try and keep the train rolling. They take on TCU. Boykin will not get the start, and they are already without their star receiver, Josh Dotson. So it could be a big day for Baker Mayfield and company in the Big 12 as the Sooners this week move up five spots after their Baylor win and are now number seven in the rankings. Just behind Oklahoma State, who is just behind Iowa at five. There's that Raider defensive alignment again for Iowa to give up the middle, maybe a couple for DJ Knox and they're gonna have to go for it again on fourth down. They had to raise the intensity in the second half. It got close. They didn't falter. They stayed with the plan. They got aggressive on offense, kind of went away from the run and started throwing to the tight end, some play action, down the field plays, and really been the difference here in the second half. That Raider defense, everyone standing. It's the patented defense of Bill Parker. With some time, Yancey spins to the outside. First down and more. Run out of bounds to stop the clock at the 31-yard line. 
Josh Jackson missed an opportunity to tackle him. 16 yards on the pickup. And Yancey had some opportunities early in the game to make some big plays. Here you can see that ability, not only just catching the ball, but making some yards after the catch. But I know he's probably still thinking about the opportunities left on the field today. A couple of those drops early on in drives. Jurasovic, the tight end across the middle, gain of four. Josie Jewell with the stop. Clock continues to move down to five and a half minutes to go for the Iowa Hawkeyes to win at least a share of the West and get into the Big Ten championship game and stay in the playoff chase at 11 and 0. Appleby directing traffic caught for first down yardage by Cole Herdman. That's a nice job. And you know what? You, you got to attribute the fight. You know, Coach Hazel has done a nice job. Every week, every time they're out in the field, they give it their all. They try to finish the games. Obviously, when you spot your team 20 points, it's never good, Beth. But they fought in this one. And, you know, what's going to be the next step to get them over the hump? Another year under their belt, get some more recruiting, got to find a quarterback stability, and try to find those weapons to put those pieces together. 11th play of the drive, and King almost had it again. He's getting close, Beth. He's, he's starting to break when the receiver breaks, start to jump a couple routes. He may have come up uh, hurt a little bit. What happens, though, if uh, the score remains the same or Iowa goes on to win? It becomes a huge matchup for Purdue and Indiana trying to get the better of their in-state yeah. arch rival in terms of recruiting and positive energy heading into the postseason. Appleby has a man near the goal line. It's caught and tumbling into the end zone for the touchdown. Is number 87, Shane McKeskey. And a 19-yard strike for Appleby. Nice play design there. Get in, all the action to the right side of the field. Just throw one back. You see this multiple times. It's really a tight end play. They use their bigger inside receiver. They're going to sell it down inside. You see right there, Molesky, number 87, just shoot, shoot out. Nobody's home on the backside because of the backside route of Yancey clearing it over the top. Nice play design for a touchdown for Purdue. 12 plays, 75 yards, under four minutes on that drive. The extra point is good, 33 to 20. You're going to need a couple of scores. Probably going to see an onside kick when we come back. McKeskey, after an embarrassing bowl game loss a year ago, some uncertainty about where things were headed. And in the offseason, a look in the mirror for the Iowa coaching staff and players, and the result has been a remarkable turnaround as Krager Koble handles the onside kick. And from a 7-6 team a year ago, they are closing in on a school-tying record 11th clock win later. of the this year. The game clock to 444. And a chance Thank to you. play for a Big Ten championship and possibly a national title. They still have Nebraska to play on the road next Friday for the Heroes Trophy. And Nebraska upset Michigan State uh, at home, so that's not going to be easy at Michigan State, excuse me. Daniels will get the call. Running backs have been busy today, but Anthony, so have the tight ends. It has been a tight end kind of day. Prager Coble right here getting the ball up the sideline. These guys make plays after they catch the ball. Kittle does a nice job getting up the field. He's been part of the offense, getting himself a touchdown. And it ends up on Prager Coble in his first touchdown of the year, his 12th straight first down catch. Been a long line of tight ends here in Iowa. Dallas Clark, Tony Moiaki with the Falcons, Scott Chandler with the Patriots, Brandon Myers down in Tampa Bay with the Buccaneers, Austin Wheatley who came out with me in the 2000 Jets. Enough, enough, you I'll tight even, ends I'll looking even, out for I'll each even other. go back way back. When I was with the Jets, <laughs> I played a year with Scott Slutsker, oh. a tight end way back in time. Iowa fans will enjoy that name. He was a very productive tight end at Iowa. Shout out to Scott. There's the distribution from C.J. Bethard today. 
Zuri, the deep back in the eye. They're going to run and run some more. A trip down tight end memory lane here at Time Iowa, but Purdue. Chris Cotter with the Tar Heels update. 30 seconds. So North Carolina trying to get into that ACC championship game with Clemson. I don't know, though. They're standing at 17 right now. Are there, is there enough juice there to get them into the playoffs well, if here, they win? When you look at their schedule, those two FCS teams that they beat early yeah. in the season obviously hurt them. Uh, but they've been hot. You look at what they've done lately, uh, you know, they've done very well. And I think they should be rated a little higher than 17. But you're right. I don't know if that's going to get them close enough, even with the win at Clemson. Clemson has Wake Forest heavy favorites today. How about down in the lower right? Oklahoma State undefeated and at home, and yet the football power index gives Baylor the edge. Big night for the Big 12 this evening. And a big afternoon here for the Iowa Hawkeyes. If the score holds, they are into the Big Ten championship game. Again, situational awareness, C.J. Beathard. Not only does he get his team in the right run checks, timeout. run pass checks, Purdue. he also slides. He just is cognizant of what's going on. you got to appreciate that they rave about that as coaches seconds. here at Iowa. A reminder coming up tonight after uh, the Cal-Stanford game out on the West Coast. Stick around for Sports Center at night. Get all the latest uh, from the day's action in college football, college basketball, the NBA, the NHL, plus a preview of the NFL games coming up tomorrow at Sports Center at night right after Cal Stanford on ESPN. I think, too, with Beathard, he's been able to find, there, there have been a lot of helping hands. You mentioned the lack of star power. They got a lot of really good guys. You've got six different guys that have had either a rushing or a receiving 100 yard game. Daniels and Kanziri and Wadley on the ground. Smith and Vandenberg and Germanique Smith through the air this year. You know, they might not be able to match up with explosive plays by some of these skilled players on an Alabama or an Ohio State or Clemson, but they're going to be able to battle with you blow for blow in the trenches. And I think that speaks volumes. And this offensive defense has been efficient. There's no question that this team can compete and potentially gives themselves an opportunity against those bigger teams. They've still got to take care of business here over the last four minutes and 17 seconds, but they'd love to flash back to 1985, the last outright Big Ten champs that went on to the Rose Bowl. They featured Heisman runner-up Chuck Long and star running back Ronnie Harmon, that huge matchup between number one and number two Michigan when the Hawkeyes were atop the charts, and Rob Holland had that game-winning field goal Hayden Fry, the coach. Bill Snyder was the offensive coordinator. A young Kirk Ferentz handled the offensive line duties on that team. And you know who beat out Chuck Long that year? And I believe the closest Heisman vote ever. What is Bill now? Down to Paul. Well, Chuck Long, one of the greatest quarterbacks in Iowa history, that 1985 Heisman Trophy runner-up. He loves the current quarterback, C.J. Beathard. He said, everybody looks at stats, but you have to watch C.J. play. He's a winner, a flat-out winner. Yeah. There's no doubt he's a winner. He's never lost a game as a starter. 12-0. And, and he is one smart quarterback. I'll tell you, the, the things they allow him to do on the field and the trust that they have has put Iowa in a very favorable situation this year. Can Appleby rally the Boilermakers? The pass downfield hangs and then falls innocently into the turf, into the wind here in the fourth quarter for Purdue. Beathard, uh, a remarkable story here. A guy out of Tennessee, of course, uh, his grandfather Bobby, the legendary GM for the Washington Redskins, originally had committed to Ole Miss, then decided to come to Iowa where he was the backup last year, almost left school. And then after the bowl game, he was named the starter. And you can speak to this, Anthony, how that confidence of knowing you're the man allows you to be a much better leader for your teammates. And he has embraced that role. On third down and 10, a first down throw to D'Angelo Yancey. Well, you're right. You know, when you're at the quarterback position, 
and there's multiple voices because you have one or two guys bouncing in and out. It's good to know that your voice is the one that everyone's listening to. Yep. And I think he's embraced that, and he's proven to this team that he's well capable of being that leader. And he continues to impress. He continues to make the right decisions. He doesn't beat you on uh, on turnovers, doesn't get the ball away. He did have a fumble today on a big hit. But overall this season, he's done a fantastic job for this team. And, again, uh, he needs this hat needs to be tipped for his performance this season. Looking to get to 12 and 0. The defense trying to slow down Austin Appleby, replacing the injured David Blau in the first half. Appleby has thrown for over 250 yards. Yancey over 100 yards receiving now, nine catches for 117. And a couple that uh, he had a chance to haul in, perhaps for seven points, that really would have tightened things up. Yeah. And that's been the difference with Purdue, you know, those extra plays, those big time moments, not making those key penalties, you know, not spiraling down when things go tough. You know, Coach Hazel's been talking about those moments, when it's going to click for this team, and they've become more consistent, almost like Iowa. You talk, We talked about Iowa, Beth, seven and six last year. I mean, not a lot has changed for them as far as personnel, athletes. They've just done it better. They've been smarter, and they've really produced on the field with limited mistakes. They don't get it on third down. They've got to go here on fourth and one. Markel Jones, a good push by the Iowa D-line, and they will stuff him short. And the Hawkeyes will take over on downs with three minutes to go. How about Faith the Cacatee and Kyle Turlow, a couple of backup defensive tackles down on the bottom to stuff that. Finish. That's what he's been preaching. What they didn't do last year was finish games. They got the lead, fourth down. There's still intensity. You got a big back, and you see five, six, seven, eight Iowa Hawkeye defenders coming in and making that stop. And, and everything, like we've talked about, from the finish to the to the lack of turnovers, to the smart play quarterback, to their offensive line, all those elements, you know what that equals, Beth? Yeah, it equals 11-0, and that's where this team is right now. Bethard back out there with the offense to try and close this out. And we've been, uh, we've been talking about the importance of this one for Iowa. A chance to get into the Big Ten championship game. Here's what's coming up next. Ohio State still undefeated. Clemson still undefeated. USC not done yet in the Pac-12 conference. And a, uh, a hello to Husker Nation. I think it's time to say hello to the Nebraska fans who are watching out there, comfy and cozy at home, sitting on a bye this week. We'll get another shot to try and take down an undefeated opponent. They've already knocked Michigan State from the unbeaten ranks, and they will now have Iowa on a short week on Friday. And they will have an Iowa team brimming with confidence. Touchdown, Hawkeyes, 42 yards, Kanziri. Perhaps Jordan wanted to say hello as well. They will be heading to Lincoln on Friday with a shot at staying unbeaten. Huge hole up the middle. Thirty-nine to twenty, and now make it forty to twenty, Iowa, with two twelve to go. Jordan Kinzeri, Jordan Kinzeri, again, great blocking inside. Got some of the backups in right now. And again, when you got nine, ten players in the box, Beth, it's going to be easy to break it. And again, when you've got that offensive-minded mentality like Kirk Ferentz does, he's a happy camper right now. This team is going to move to 11-0 and capture their first West title. Down to Paul. You know, I had a chance to speak to C.J. Bethel this week, and you know, this is a team that's had three guys rush for over 195 yards in a game. Ken Ziri's one of them. He says it doesn't matter who's in there. This offensive line is incredible. He said, Paul, you could rush for 100 yards. I don't know 
if he's aware of how fast I am. So, Anthony, back, you're probably good for 50 yards. Hey, let's let's close that mic down real quick there, and then we'll just start talking about let's talk about Paul hitting the holes here. I don't know, but I've seen him run on the treadmill. I don't know quite sure if he can hit that hole like Kinziri did. But he's right. I'll tell you, it's, it's nice to have options at the running back position, and all these kids have contributed in a huge way for this Iowa success. They don't get to carry it, but they're right there. Pleva and Cox, the fullbacks, Myers, Welsh, Blythe, Walsh, and Cole Croston up front, making big holes for that running game all year long and again here today. So they will get ready to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a team that beat them a year ago. Big return from Pearsonell on the punt. A late Iowa score after they had blown a 17-point lead. We'd go to overtime, and then the Huskers, Tommy Armstrong, Kenny Bell, he had four TDs on the day. And Nebraska won that. Can they do it again at home? Well, you know, they're tough inside on the defensive line. That matchup between Malik Collins, number seven, they're a D tackle for Nebraska, and Sean Welsh, the left guard, and the center, Blythe. Those will be key matchups to get this running, running game sparked in Nebraska and take control of what they would try to do on offense. Incomplete at the 10 yard line, looking for Cole Herdman. Iowa will tie the school record with an 11th win. They will get to 11 and 0. They will stay perfect, obviously, at home 7 and 0 for just the second time in school history. Illegal forward pass. Offense number 12. Five yard penalty from the spine of the foul. Loss of down. Second down. And here's the thing, too, to remember about Kirk Ferentz. After the 7-6 and six season a year ago, some folks were wondering if his time was done. Now you talk about a guy who may be winning his fourth Coach of the Year honor in the Big Ten. That would pass Hayden Fry, Joe Paterno, and Bo Schembechler, who each have three honors along with Kirk right now. And it's been some of those small, subtle changes. He's been a company guy, a guy that's done it the same way every year, not practicing on Thursdays, doing something different on Fridays. I mean, to me, unprecedented. Guys not coming in on a Thursday is unprecedented to me, especially in the college ranks. You got college kids, you got to rely on them, lean on, but he forces them to come in Friday morning, which is also good as far as getting out at night with some of these players. So that's always a good thing. But all those little subtle things, buying into some of the new technologies. You got GPS systems they use on the players to track the nutrition, the calories they burn, get more efficiency. They get more hours in the week because they practice on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays instead of Thursdays. So all those things add in. And because of the fact he's been able to change, this team has uh, really uh, evolution makes themselves to this 11-0 start this season. And meanwhile, on the field, some old-fashioned, old-school, run the ball, stop the run, don't cough it up. Been around for 100 years, mm -hmm. Beth. Still Just, works. <laughs> it still works if you do it right. It's, the thing is, it's hard to do it consistently every week. And they've done it. it they've proven, proven it wrong by, by, by stepping up and doing that. Another pass nearly picked off. That was Sean Draper coming for it. And the Iowa defense holds again. And You may have seen an empty seat or two today at Kinnick Stadium, but you got to tip your cap to the Hawkeye fans that are out here today supporting their team. It was in single digits with nine inches of snow on the ground yeah. a couple hours before kick, and yet they have showed up in impressive numbers to support their undefeated Hawkeyes, who will go to 11-0 and get set to head to Lincoln to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers next week. They already know they'll be in the Big Ten championship game, and now they want to keep their playoff hopes alive on Friday. And I remember my senior year, you know, what can you make it a memorable season? And you got to give the shout out to the Cole Fishers, the the the, the uh, Drew Otts of the world, the Myers, the Lomaxes on this team that have fought and over those years, those tough seasons. And now it all comes uh, to fruition for you as they go their 11th victory of the season. It really is an incredible feeling for these seniors. 
Last Big Ten title was 2004. They will have a chance to play for another one. And Hawkeye fans can add a trip to Indianapolis to the calendar on December 5th in the Big Ten championship game awaiting either Michigan, Penn State, Michigan State, or Ohio State. And a terrific shout out as well to our crew, some of whom were here at four o'clock this morning in the inclement weather to bring these pictures to you. The Iowa Hawkeyes, 40 to 20 over Purdue. They advance to the Big Ten championship game and will have an opportunity to complete a 12 and 0 season next Friday at Nebraska. College football continues on ESPN2, but first let's send you to Chris Cotter, Butch Davis, and Robert Smith back in the studio as Iowa, a muted celebration of 11 and 0.